Uh, but this, this little honey, five pounds, 15 ounces, one ounce less uh, than six pounds. So it is legitimately under six pounds for the Fab Arm D2. Packmeyer SC100 recoil pad is added, standard length of pull, and um, the recoil pad adds exactly one ounce. So the Packmeyer that's fairly skeletonized does not add the additional weight that you might expect with something like a Kickies. The balance for a light gun just is superb. This is really, really good. And that's the problem with light guns, is that uh, when you have an alloy receiver, but standard barrels, heavy barrels, they want a nosedive. And the balance sucks, the shouldering sucks. Uh, it really takes a lot of work to have a perfectly balanced, lightweight gun with an alloy receiver. And Fab Arm has achieved that. What I like about Fab Arm is that over the years, since they had the Elos uh, Deluxe, they've made a lot of changes. A lot of subtle changes, but they all add up. They've improved the forearm, so it's easier to remove and easier to replace. Before, it was fairly easy to crack a fo uh, forearm if you got sloppy. If you weren't sloppy, no problem. But if you weren't looking at what you were doing, it was very easy to crack an ear off of a forearm. That has been rectified. The, uh, the hammer springs, uh, really the whole gun has been gone through by uh, Antonio at Cesar Guarini. And between Antonio, the folks at Fab Arm, and feedback from Giorgio, West Lang, and other people, they've really improved the gun. A big thing that they didn't announce is that now you've got a steel breech on the 20 gauge. Now it was only on the 12 gauge before, but now the 20 and the 28 have a steel breech face, which I think makes the gun better, more robust, longer lasting. Not aware of any problems with the prior version, but better is better and more robust is more robust. So. I really like that. It's a uh, game scene engraving. Fairly nicely inked. So it does stand out. It's not the invisible little micro embossing uh, that you might be familiar with in some other guns. It's got a nice palm swell. Um, I don't like the really sharp uh, forearm edges, although this is a tulip design, so, so I guess you would call it a modified schnabel. Uh, I think it looks good, and it's a nice slim trim gun, and well, you just carry this all day. I mean, this is this is one light gun. So, uh, does it go bang? Let's find out. These are some uh, Remington Nitro Sporting Clays, 7 eighths of an ounce. Seven eighths of an ounce with 1,300 feet per second. So a little peppy for uh, a 20 gauge target load. And let's see if our Willy Bird 2 actually works. And I presume it will, if I turn it on. And maybe I can give it a little bit of a delay. And I may, I may grab uh, my Upland vest so I don't look so clumsy out here. I'll still look clumsy, but just not as clumsy. The wind is incoming about 20 miles an hour, 18 to 20.
So that's why I have the trap throwing them out low. All the way up in the air, they just sail. And of course, we'll check the ejection, which is very nice. That's six feet. And even though I'm just wearing a shirt, so I can tell you already that the recoil is very manageable. And I write that off not to the light gun weight, but just because the gun fits me extremely well, rather than the straight stock, fab arms have cast, so they have right and left hand stocks. Fits me extremely well, and uh, I'm a big believer in the Packmeyer SC100 pad. It's a nice, uh, a nice beefy pad. So you can only expect so much recoil attenuation with um, the skinny field pads, regardless who, who has them. Uh, a 10 or a 12 millimeter pad, there's just not much room uh, to absorb any force. And this is not a flimsy pad at all. It's very, very firm. It's got a little uh, plastic ridge on top so it won't snag. So let me give it a couple more quick shots. So yeah, as a dedicated clays gun, uh, this wouldn't be it. You would want to go with the steel receiver D2 uh, for sure, because that extra weight is just going to help you. So uh, casual clays, it doesn't make any difference. If you're not shooting much, um, but doing a lot of walking, this is going to pay off for you. Now obviously if you're chasing pheasants, you're hunting in the fall, you're doing a lot more than just wearing just one thin light shirt, which is all I'm doing. So it was 7 eighths ounce of a load, 7 eighths ounce, 1300 feet per second. Let me step it up just to see how well it tolerates a little, little heavier load. These are Winchester Super Pheasant Diamond Grade. One ounce, number fives, 1,300 feet per second. So I think this will be the next clear notch up as far as load intensity. We'll see if it, if it blows me around or if it uh, makes me blink or anything. I doubt that it will. Not a problem. Yeah, it's a heavier load, um, but there's no real jab there. And of course, pheasant hunting is not high volume shooting. With your upland jacket on, there's just not going to be much to feel. But I can go higher, and that's what I'll do. So, we started with 7 eighths of an ounce at 1,300 feet per second. We went to 1 ounce at 1,300 feet per second. And now we're going to ounce and an eighth, 1,300 feet per second, which is Remington Wingmaster HD. So, the same increase in payload of, an eighth of 1 eighth of an ounce, but we're maintaining the same 1,300 foot per second nominal velocity. And as you can probably tell, uh, the wind is picking up. It's a pretty windy day. We've got wind turbines that are spinning. and uh, I need to come back out here, check the barrel regulation, and do some choke experimentation, although the results should be identical to my Elos 2 Elite. But just too windy to get any valuable patterning information.
Yeah, it's louder, uh, but no pain. I just feel a little more pressure, but uh, nothing that's going to make me wince or blink or flinch. Not a problem. So I can guess. I guess I can go one more, as long as I'm at it. This has been my traditional wild pheasant load ever since I was a puppy, and it's an ounce and one quarter. So not quite the velocity. 1185 feet per second, ounce and a quarter, number fives. So before Tungsten Super Shot came along, where you really don't need ounce and a quarter, seven eighths of an ounce of number eights, or one ounce of number seven and a half is a wonderful long range load. This was the go-to. We'll see what happens. Yeah, really, uh, when you're hunting, you're not even going to feel this. Yep, you're not going to feel it at all in a hunting scenario. And if you're pheasant hunting, you're going to be doing a lot more than just wearing a thin shirt with no undershirt. So, very, very happy with the way, with the way this gun shoots even with heavy loads. Good gun fit and a good recoil pad and you're well on your way. Trigger is very very crisp. Uh, the tang safety is more generous. I have a personal aversion to Beretta tang safeties that are almost flush and slippery. That's unintended pheasant conservation and that's the way a lot of people around here have gotten rid of their Berettas. Even if they like Berettas for hunting uh, that tank safety really, really can ruin your day, really stinks it up. It only takes a rooster or two when you can't get your safety off and uh, the gun's going bye-bye. So I hope you can see this on camera, the Fab Arm did a beautiful job with their steel insert. It's, it's a nice one-piece insert. I hope you can see that on camera. If not, I am going to snap a still picture and I'll use it as an overlay. But uh, they didn't announce it, but I think it is a significant improvement in their 20 gauge and 28 gauge models. And while I've got the wood out here, um, Fab Arm does a better, better than average job um, with their wood. You know, it's not designed to be exhibition grade or anything really wild, but there is a, a lot of distinct mineral streaks and of course the forearm and the buttstock matches. And if it doesn't match, that's, that's obnoxious. Because, sure, fit comes first, function second, um, but aesthetics just uh, give you pride of ownership and I'm more motivated to clean guns that are pretty guns after they're cleaned up than, than junkers. So I won't do an extensive video today just because of the wind and the noise, um, but as those of you that are familiar with Fab Arm know, you've got tri-bore barrels, uh, steel rated, uh, with all choke constrictions up through their 9-10 and the number for fab arm is just under four thousandths. So a, uh, a five slash 10 choke is roughly a modified, is just under 20 thousandths. It's 3.9 something or other. Just under four thousandths increments. So it's, that's an easy way to look at factory fab arm chokes as far as constriction. Now if you'd like extended chokes, and chokes that are tungsten rated 
all the way through extra full turkey, da 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 da. True Lock has them available right now. So you can call uh, the folks at True Lock and their extended choke, 17 4 chrome molly, heat treated to 120, 125,000 psi. And with those, uh, the way True Lock does it, you've got to make rules because there's so many different loads out there. Uh, with True Lock chokes, you can use steel through an improved modified. Um, this is their precision hunter line, all extended chokes, tungsten, uh, any constriction. Tungsten doesn't put the hoop stress on chokes that you might think because we're talking about a small diameter shot. I don't know of anybody that's using larger than number seven. I've never used larger than number seven tungsten super shot. So if you really want to stress out a barrel, letter size steel shot at high velocity, triple B's at 1700 feet per second, that can give you some choke creep. That's rough on a choke. Um, but the diameter of, of the shot with hard shot materials makes a big difference as far as the punishment you're giving to your choke. So that's about it. Uh, it's just starting out. I'll tell you what, it's a beautiful gun and really what makes it, uh, check them out for yourself, your fab arm dealer, is the balance because so many lightweight guns just are not properly balanced. A heavy barrel set um, and an alloy receiver just does not work well. They want a nose dive. If you got something that uh, just takes a little bit of movement, a little bit of nudge to get a smooth swing, and, a, and uh, easy to start, smoothly to stop. It's a hard combination to find in a lightweight gun. Uh, a lot easier for your eight and a half pound uh, target guns, for example. Um, but when you get it right, like I said, the balance, I don't think you're gonna find uh, a sub six pound shotgun that's balanced this perfectly. I'm really, really impressed with it. With all Fab Arm products, you do get an overproofed barrel, or barrel set in this case, 1630 BAR, which is uh, a special proof conducted by the Italian proof files just for Fab Arm. So, extremely tough, uh, overproofed barrels. That's their trademark. I like the little palm swell. I mean, there's just a lot of nice little touches, like the scroll work on the bottom of the receiver. Um, Fab Arm does it right. And what I personally appreciate about Fab Arm is that they continually refine their product. And the biggest thing with this particular model would be the steel breech face, but they haven't even made a big deal out of uh, or announced. But uh, Giorgio, Antonio, Wes Lang, I mean, if they, they can make it better, um, they tend to do so even if they don't have to. And that's, uh, that's something that I appreciate anyway. You know, years ago, some of the ads said, well, we don't care how many, but just how good. Well, as we all know today, with a lot of things, it's just how many. It's, it, it's not how good. How good takes time, and uh, how good uh, is costly, and takes a lot of quality control. And if things aren't right, uh, they get scrapped. So you're looking at increased inspection and increased scrap rates that go along with it. So there'll be better days uh, for patterning. Uh, you get your fab arm because it's steel rated. Fab arm and Caesar Greeny for that matter have excellent barrel regulation. We'll test that. Um, those are two of the main reasons. The excellent barrel regulation and uh, case of fab arm, steel rated all the way through 9 slash 10 and being overproofed. So I think that covers it for a little introductory video. This is the first day I've shot it at all and I'm impressed. I mean this is going to be one fun gun this fall. Uh, 
something like this. I mean, I'm not going to uh, juggle it, but you can certainly carry it all day. And if it doesn't beat me up with just a shirt on, it's not going to do it when I've got uh, hunting clothes on, or anybody else for that matter. So uh, if you're looking for a gun, anyway, my stage of life, which is ancient, and uh, I'll be on Social Security in a month, so uh, I'm aging rapidly. Uh, I won't buy a gun if I don't believe that it's going to outlive me by a lot. And I think this gun will be around a lot longer than I am. And that's, that's just uh, that's the way I look at things. Buy once, cry once. And uh, at the end of the day, you still have an extremely valuable gun that anybody can be proud of. Uh, hopefully, uh, you've got friends, family, uh, your kids that catch the hunting and shooting bug. And it'll give several uh, lifetimes of service, not just mine, which is limited. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by.